Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Tonight, cameras roll, capturing frightening riots from across the globe. Violent images never seen before. The worst rioting ever. From Dallas to London, police crack down, restoring law and order. Right wins out over might. A handful move others to chaos. If you can get out of here with your flat in one piece, you're lucky. Fear not. Mob mentality is only a state of mind. I'm John Bunnell. In the next hour, we'll take you to the front lines of civil unrest. You'll see and hear what it's like for police who are sometimes caught in the middle of madness. You'll also witness how a few can move others into a violent frenzy. Unfortunately, riots are a global fact of life. We all wish they weren't. The reality is, violence has left cities and souls in ruin. But why and how do riots happen? It's outsiders coming in, they're, they're trying to take advantage of a situation and uh, turn it around and, and convey a much different message. They want the violent message. What we need to be teaching people is to think for themselves and to find other ways of solving social problems. If nobody steps in in the beginning and other people begin to join, then that has a way of, of becoming a runaway train. Minneapolis, Minnesota. Police respond to a shooting call in this suburban neighborhood. An angry crowd is gathered. A young boy, and it's not clear why, is suddenly attacked. He gets away, slightly injured and very shaken. These two detectives who actually came to investigate the shooting are now the target. Not everyone in the crowd is out of control. In fact, only an irate few seem to capture the camera's attention. Watch in slow motion. The man in the purple shirt tries to protect the cops, but watch the man in orange. He lands a right jab. I think it's terrifying. You're going into chaos, into a situation that you don't know how far it's gonna escalate. The potential for losing your life is high. When we take another look, you'll see the same man in the orange shirt take a leaping charge at the cop. He lands a blow and is still throwing punches. We try and go into these situations prepared for the worst. More cops move in. Still, more are called. Okay, need backup. We've got some trouble out here. That's fine, copy. We have backup in route. For a moment, police seem to have the upper hand, so they retreat. As they do, the lawless few go after a reporter and TV cameraman. The cameraman gets knocked to the ground. Here's what the scene looked like through the eyes of the terrified photographer. Watch what happens to the reporter in the blue dress. The photographer can barely stand. He gets knocked to the ground again. The final insult, his wallet is stolen. The cameraman suffers a concussion. The reporter who gets punched in the face ends up with a broken nose. First priority is everybody's safety. The restoration of order is obviously the second priority and those two things are hand in hand. Westwood Village, California. I had just finished dinner and I was driving around the village about 7.15. And then in the matter of 10 minutes, it went from five, six pedestrians on the street 
to a thousand people, wall-to-wall -wall people. Thousands of UCLA Bruin fans rush the streets to celebrate their NCAA basketball championship. They haven't won the big prize in 20 years. So now it's time to party and party hard. But with celebration comes drinking, a lot of it. So you got alcohol, you got adrenaline, you've got all the human emotion that goes with winning, and now you've got mob thing. With no respect for private property, privileged students suddenly attack this radio station van. These are good kids, they're college kids, they're happy, and they're destroying all this property. They smash the glass and crush the roof, but they want more. With their schoolmates egging them on, they finally flip the van, nearly crushing two students. Amazingly, cops are present, but they decide to wait to make their move. What had been, oh, hey, that's a cute baton. You really like being out here? Isn't this fun? I went to get out of my way. This is ours. We're taking over. Why don't you go home? It's now a mad scene played out on city streets. It turns into a competitive free-for-all. Who can do the most damage? Students climb this streetlight and desperately try to break it from its cement foundation. It's an accident just waiting to happen. Self, put your people to the right. Lieutenant Durham recalls just how quickly things change. The crowd is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's building, and the police are now seeing, hey, this is a changing event. The cops try to take control of this out of control situation. To be successful, they need backup. Several police in riot gear do arrive and charge the mob. More police are ordered to move in, shoulder to shoulder. Not too thin, not too thin. They line the street, shooting tear gas at the defiant students. A turning point of the evening. They eventually put down the riot. On this day, 20 arrests are made, 12 are injured, some seriously. The Bruins' victory is just a bitter memory. A riot can be terrifying. Our job is about control, and a riot can be totally uncontrollable. <laughs> Moscow, Russia. It is the worst political violence in this city in nearly a century. This video, shot by Russian riot police, has never been broadcast before. Thousands of screaming communist protesters hurl sharpened sticks and bottles at Russian police. The police fire back with water cannons and tear gas. The communists want things their way, the old way. To them, anything that resembles the new democratic regime is the enemy. For a time, protesters seem to overwhelm riot police. The police try to put down the vicious street fighting. It seems hopeless, but police do prevail. Watch as the communists take control of this riot police truck. Police try to regain control of their vehicle. Just as they do, the demonstrators disable the truck and continue their fierce battle. By day's end, hundreds of people are injured, including many police. This Russian woman cries out, but no one seems to listen. On this day, Russia and its people pay a very high price for political and social change. Coming up next on Riots, Mobs Out of Control. And all elements stand by and hold your transmission. Dallas, Texas is in big trouble when a violent riot there surprises even the police. Look out, look out! 
we'll also take you to San Francisco, where a rowdy demonstration turns into a vicious attack. And later, you will see the world's scariest sports riots, where fans lose the game and fanatics lose control. Stay with us. the most dangerous crime. And because it is physically violent, young people who are willing to take greater risks are more often the ones involved. As a younger person, there is that point where you're really concerned with impressing and fitting in. Statistics show that young men are 95% more likely to riot than women. Societies encourage women against acting out aggressively. Um, you'll find uh, that young men, particularly in our society, are encouraged to do things in larger groups and team sports. Dallas, Texas. The Cowboys win the 1993 Super Bowl. 300,000 people come to celebrate. We want the ball! We want the ball, y'all! We want the ball! It is the largest street party and parade this city has ever seen. Confetti fills the air, resembling a blizzard in the Northeast. Even the youngest of fans couldn't wipe the smile from their face. As the victory parade winds down, an unexplainable tension winds tight. Isolated acts of violence erupt near the parade route. Dallas is suddenly in trouble. Stand by and hold your transmission. Innocent bystanders are attacked and robbed as an unruly few move through crowds, inciting others to join in. Dallas police are surprised at this sudden turn of events. Reinforcements are on their way. Watch your backs, watch your backs. A liquor store just a block from the parade route is now under siege. A bunch of people came running across the street and rushed in here and just grabbed what they wanted and stomped me all over the floor. They just ran over and started smashing bottles. It was a brand of urban unrest not seen in this city in decades. And the violent images captured and replayed on television managed to sour even a Super Bowl victory. There's a lot of people feeling suppressed, not heard, not understood, and they've got their back to the proverbial wall. Huntington Beach, California. A pro surfing championship is upstaged as hundreds of rowdy teenagers turn this peaceful, sandy place into a dangerous, fiery hell. The riot starts when police try to rescue several young women from teenage thugs, rowdy beachgoers who simply want to start some trouble. It escalates out of control as a dozen teenagers light fires to police vehicles. Police mobilize. They must put an end to this madness. We Basically, we're surrounded by the crowd and started taking rocks, bottles, sand chairs, anything that was available to be thrown at us was, was coming at us from all directions. They started from one car over there, went to a um, lifeguard jeep, and then they went over to the two police cars, overturned them. They just started breaking the windows. I mean, it was like no control. It was just, it was just fully out of hand. Cops do gain control, but not before a police copter and several dozen riot police make their presence known. Nothing like a nice, relaxing day on the beach. The beach is the most laid-back place in California. I mean, you never expect anything to go bad there. This mob mentality just took over, and the police became the target. <laughs> 
San Francisco, a city known for its culture and natural beauty. But tonight, that image is shattered. Five thousand gay demonstrators take to the streets to protest job discrimination. The governor has just vetoed a bill promising that. The bill would have protected gays against discrimination. Dozens of extremists are now angrily destroying state property. Outnumbered by the growing mob, riot police retreat inside this glass entrance. It is a California state building. It turns out to be a bad move. Police are now trapped only to wind up in even more peril. Activists throw firebombs at police. They've already smashed huge panes of glass. As the night wears on, several protesters are arrested and injured. Coming up next on Riots, mobs out of control. You'll have box seats to some of the world's scariest soccer matches. It's not just a game, it's a battle. And in Brussels, it's a battle to stay alive. When a concrete wall collapses, crushing hundreds of people. And later, we'll show you a popular vacation destination like you've never seen before. Stay with us. These frightening scenes, first broadcast live around the world, are a horrible reminder of just how violent the human spirit can be. After all, soccer is a sport, a competitive, athletic, non-violent game. Yet we see, over and over again, some of the most brutal, violent acts of aggression played out. Not on the field, but in the stands. The athletes want to play. The fanatics want to fight. These sporting events are a lot of people who feel disenfranchised, feel powerless, no sense of meaning in their life. This may be the one feeling of power they have in their life. So that's why the need for a swift, decisive, overpowering intervention is so essential to stop that spread. Heisel Stadium, Brussels. Highly charged British soccer fans fly into a frenzy, attacking rival Italian fans. In a panic, the Italians make a run for the exit. They suddenly have nowhere to go. The enemy now, a concrete wall. As the hysteria rises, other fans attempt an escape over the wall but it quickly collapses under the weight. Hundreds are now trapped. Riot police struggle to protect themselves, let alone some troubled fan. It seems impossible to calm this violent mania. Many more Belgian riot police do arrive, which allows medical teams to help the injured. This is a level of violence that you won't see in the US. Fearing even more violence, Incredibly, the European Soccer Cup final is eventually played. It's unbelievable, given the number of casualties. Truly a tremendous loss for the game of soccer. It's like an experiment in fear that you don't ever want to go to. Experiment in panic. People were just pushing right on by, and it was like almost being filleted right there in front of the crowd. Rio de Janeiro, 
This soccer stadium is packed to the max. Rio is about to clinch the title. The crowd of 60,000 goes crazy. And then the unthinkable. Taking another look, you see the railing give way and several dozen people free falling onto the crowd below. Brazilian fans are in a state of shock. A copter arrives to take away the injury. As you can imagine, there are many. It's about as scary as scary can be if you have uh, a mass of people. Sao Paulo, Brazil. These people running on the field are not soccer players. They're fans on the attack. The game announcers are now broadcasting a play-by-play -play riot. Fans grab sticks and stones from a pile left behind after some stadium construction. It's all the ammo they'll need. Incredibly, it's a giant invitation for much more violence. More fans break through a gate and charge the field. Opposing fans are now at war. This fan is hit by a rock. A stranger pulls him to safety. His injury sparks a whole new round of violence. Listen to the crowd roar. The opposing fans run in panic. Many police are now on the field. Even more arrive and take control. They eventually put down the riot. But for three hours, tens of thousands of soccer fans engage in the worst kind of senseless violence. Sports violence, especially soccer, is nothing new. What is new is the incredible violence we see after a game, outside the arena. Win or lose, some hockey fans around the world seem to bring their aggressions from the ice to the streets. We've got way out of hand. Some end up with penalties, others end up injured. It's a strange way to celebrate a victory. Now they've got themselves all whipped up in the excitement and they want it to continue and they don't want to just be on the sidelines anymore. They want to be in the midst of it. The bottom line is, violence to me is violence. I don't think anything really justifies that. It's deja vu in Montreal. Their Canadian hockey team has just won another Stanley Cup. Tens of thousands of fans hit the streets with pride but a handful have a different plan. Several young people decide to loot the shopping district, cutting a path of destruction up and down St. Catherine Street. Boos and hisses are not enough to stop the looting. Some looters are so bold, they even hit the second floor of this mega music store. Police do make arrests but not without resistance. Police try to disperse the crowd. The ugly mob doesn't budge. Instead, they riot. Once the mob is finished with the patrol cars, they turn on the police. It takes police several hours to bring order back to Montreal, but not before several million dollars worth of property is destroyed. It's a Stanley Cup win that feels more like a loss. Next, in Denver. It's the worst rioting this city has seen. 
as some fans there think this is winning. Meanwhile, Vancouver loses the hockey prize and nearly its city. And later we travel to Seoul, South Korea. Cameras capture an incredibly violent protest, putting police smack in the middle of danger. Stay with us. Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Hockey can be a pretty violent sport. Psychologists say the violence we see after a game is a continuation of the battle we see on the ice. But why do we see so many hockey wins turn into big city losses? But it is an altered state that these people are in. And then wham, you're caught up in the group consciousness. Get away from it. Denver, Colorado. The Avalanche hockey team has just won their first Stanley Cup. There is jubilation in the streets. Joy quickly turns to anger after Denver police seal off a downtown area, keeping away more people from joining the celebration. A few start fires. Some climb street signs, destroying property. Fights break out everywhere. It got way out of hand. The victory rally is now a vicious riot. The last hour we had probably about 3,000 people that uh, uh, just were, besides being inebriated, they were out of control. The crowd hurls bottles at riot police. The police have had enough. You have one last warning, otherwise we're going to disperse gas. The crowd doesn't budge. The cops disperse tear gas keeping their promise. Several people are hurt in the melee. Dozens are arrested as this celebration turns into an ugly free-for-all. You've got people wanting to continue the excitement of the victory of the game. You've got alcohol lessening their inhibitions. You've got a bad mix there. Vancouver, British Columbia. They're drunk. They're angry. And they're on a rampage. Their Canucks hockey team has just lost the Stanley Cup. We're just outside the arena, but millions of miles from sanity. At the same time, just a few blocks away, this festive post-game party is in full swing completely unaware of the escalating violence around the corner. Suddenly, everything changes. Two men decide to walk an electrical wire. One man falls a hundred feet to the street below. It's a miracle he survives. An ambulance creeps through the hostile mob to rescue the fallen victim. The crowd makes it almost impossible. Police say this was the turning point of the evening. Listen to the level of panic as police plea for help on their radios. Backup riot police do arrive with one thing in mind, regaining control. Back on! Get on the roof! They fire tear gas and rubber bullets into the crowd. The violence doesn't stop. It simply moves up the street as looting takes hold. A few young people are fed up with the lawlessness. They take a stand. This is my mom's store. Look what they're doing. Others join in and speak their mind. This is a disgrace to Vancouver. None of it seems to matter to this roving mob of thugs. 
Dozens of police cars are trashed and turned as more scenes like this play out into the wee hours of the morning. Innocent residents find themselves trapped downtown in the wrong place at the wrong time. If I don't drive, I'll have a Hey, if you can get out of here with your flat in one piece, I'll, oh you know, you're God. lucky. Finally, at 4 o'clock in the morning, Vancouver is peaceful. The streets are a mess. The damage is in the millions. Hundreds of people are injured, and the emotional toll is insurmountable. It's hard to believe. All this for a hockey game. The potential is always there in any situation to turn into a riot. And you have to be prepared to restore that order and hopefully not get anybody hurt. Madison, Wisconsin. The university is one step closer to a championship. Oh, it's great, it's great, Students cheer a great victory. Yeah, number one. Yeah. Now they want a piece of the team, so they rush the field but a chain link fence stands between them and their players. They desperately want to share in their school's victory. But the only thing in common now is a dangerous crush. Thousands of students push and shove, creating a wall of human flesh. There is nowhere to go but down. Their football heroes try to help the injured. But the crush continues. Many lay injured as the reality and sheer horror of what has just happened starts to sink in. For those watching, the stress and anxiety is too much to bear. Be aware that there are ambulances with injured people heading your way. Dozens of ambulances arrive on the field. At least 70 people are injured some seriously. The question on everyone's mind still remains. How can such pure joy turn so quickly into pure pain? For these fans, the answers come too late. Coming up next, Tahiti, a honeymoon haven. Hey, we were married two days ago, and we just can't sleep. It's a little too stressful. A peaceful vacation destination. Tonight, all that's changed. And later, one of the worst riots in London ever, as that city is under attack. Plus, we take you to Los Angeles, where three days of rioting causes a billion dollars in damage and an overwhelming amount of shame. Stay with us. Riots are a universal act. They are violent and sometimes fatal. They happen in any country, in any language, at any time. This level of violence knows no boundaries and always leads to the same inevitable end. Bloodshed, destruction, and a lingering fear. Riots often happen because people are angry. They want to lash out, but it's the wrong thing to do. 
Tahiti. Hundreds of protesters stampede the airport's runway. They're out for blood. They want to put an immediate stop to underground nuclear testing. They also want the French-controlled government out. French riot police try to beat back the angry mob. The anti-nuclear demonstrators strike police with sticks, rocks, and chains. The much better equipped riot police cannot hold their ground. A protester crashes a bulldozer into the airport building. Fire breaks out in the main terminal. This was the duty-free shop. More police arrive and fire tear gas into the defiant crowd, which has now grown to several thousand. Dozens of cars in the airport parking lot are torched. For some tourists, this is the last thing they expected. Well, we're on our honeymoon and we just arrived today. We were married two days ago and right now we can't sleep. It's a little too stressful. By nightfall, the violence moves from the airport to downtown. Fire is raging on every block. Mob looting takes hold as more fires are set, making it almost impossible for firefighters to put anything out. Tahitians watch helplessly as their homes and businesses are looted and burned. Tourists also make a run for their lives. Look at the view from this hotel room. It is a snapshot of hell. Scenes of sheer horror from a once peaceful and calm little island. Aggression is a fundamental aspect of being human. Now, different societies have different kinds of cultures that more or less encourage that. You're going to find it across the world. Seoul, South Korea. Thousands of students are fed up with what they say is an undemocratic government. You can almost feel the pressure and hatred between the two sides. A standoff is an understatement. Violence is inevitable. They pelt police with homemade gas bombs. Riot police are overwhelmed with fear. With deadly accuracy, these students deliver a firebomb at the feet of several police. Frantic cops help each other and put out the flames. With armored trucks, more riot police arrive and are now on the offensive. They shoot tear gas into the heart of the angry mob. The defiant students who show up with helmets and masks are unfazed. It's now a battle of wills. Students know that the Korean government is not about to change their ways, which leaves only little hope and a lot of bloodshed and destruction talking about nations here, we're talking about generations of belief systems that are culminated now with people that are taking extreme measures. Many riots start off as peaceful protests, like this one in London, England. 50,000 people demonstrate against higher taxes, a voting tax they say is unfair. Suddenly, and without warning, a handful of angry protesters outside Downing Street turned very violent. A clash with police is now underway. The violent spark catches fire and rapidly spreads. At Trafalgar Square, mounted police desperately try to bring order. They are pelted with rocks and bottles. They charge the crowd on horseback, nearly crushing this woman. Incredibly, a brave group of strangers risk their own lives and pull her to safety. The crowd grows more angry as a mob mentality takes hold.
stores are now looted. And the violence takes a turn for the worse. Thick black smoke fills the air as protesters set fire to high-rise buildings and cars up and down the city streets. As the evening goes on, the number of arrests mount. In the end, several hundred people are injured, including many unarmed police. I was in a stooping position, and I believe I then got kicked in the face and received the injury that you can see to my eye. Government officials blame a handful of troublemakers for starting the riot. Meanwhile, protest organizers say rioting was the last thing on their mind when their peaceful march began. Coming up next on Riots, Mobs Out of Control. The devil descends on the city of angels as Los Angeles gets turned on its side. Three days of looting, torching, violence, and disgrace. LA's darkest hour. Stay with us. Los Angeles, California. For three long days and nights, the city of angels turns into a fiery hell, the devil in disguise. These images broadcast live around the globe showed the world just how violent some people can be. When the spark was ignited, you had the failure of the system to move swiftly. A lot went wrong. Uh, we had a situation where we had very bad feelings by a large portion of this community against the police, and we couldn't find a way to resolve that without violence. It is LA's darkest hour. 2,000 fires burn throughout the city. Over $1 billion worth of damage. As building after building is looted and torched. The justice! The peace! The justice! The peace! So it starts here. And sadly ends here, with the worst kind of nightmare in between. Unforgettable and shameful images that will remain with us all. I think like most cops, I'm a tremendous optimist because we all came on this job to help make things better. And, and I think that uh, everybody likes to think that in some small manner they've succeeded. As you look into this sea of people, Imagine what it's like to suddenly be trapped, caught up in a mob mentality, the victim of uncontrollable violence. After all, it can happen to any of us, at any time, in any place. But there is hope going forward, because most of us are peaceful and law-abiding, as we should be. Remember, you have the power you can make a difference. Keep the peace.